I'm going to uh, continue the my coverage of the activities in the wiki application chapter and uh, at the moment I am inside this section titled persistent classes so this is a bit of a repeat from the previous page although we did not copy this log4j uh, jar file and uh, we need to get that so let's go ahead and do that but we did set up the log4j properties file let's go ahead and get that um, well, let's uh, go into the lib folder here we're going to copy uh, this log4j.jar file copy that and um, here we don't have a lib folder so we need to create that first it's under web inf and there's the folder lib and let's uh, paste that in there let's add this to the build path <coughs> now the now we need to create a um, a page class. This will be used for to con uh, to contain uh, instances of the uh, page data. In fact, here's the here's the file down here. Let's go ahead and do that. So it's under SRC. Let's uh, create a new class, and uh, the package is wiki dot data. And the name is uh, page. And we have the um, the code here for us. Let me show you a better way to do it. Actually, I think I talk about it in here. So here's an alternative to because normally this this text wouldn't be available when you're working on a project normally you would you would think that uh, you would identify the data and then provide the accessors to it that you need so let's go ahead and paste that in there oops I'm trying to format that using the visual studio style there so it's uh, so control shift F is that it no try it yeah control shift F and uh, now what we can do here we use this um, I think it's under source it's generate getters and setters let's go ahead and do that so we want all of these we want the get and set methods to be generated for each of these these fields I believe that's what we're going to do here. So there's get content, set content, get name, set name is published, set published, so on. That's all there. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, generate that. The insertion point is after published ID. That's after this field here. And uh, that looks good. The access mod modifiers are all public. Let's hit OK on that. So it saves us a little bit of time, although it's not formatted the way I would like. I'd like to put a space in here. Well, we can easily do that. Yeah, it saves us uh, quite a bit of work just to generate those. Okay, save that. There's our, our page data. It's a persistent class. We're going to need a DAO to manage that. And the <laughs> suggestion here is to create <coughs> a data ox a data access object super class or parent class. It's called data access object. Let's go ahead and create that. This is the contents of that. So in this folder, we're going to create a new class 
called because I right clicked on the folder it, it inserted the package name for me that I want let's hit finish on that so this will be a general parent class that um, that data access objects will extend let's go ahead and take a look at that so the the idea there is we place common code in a parent that we then um, e uh, extend from. So here it is. There's the package wiki.data. This is the reference to the data source. This is the set data source method. It's static. This will be invoked when the application initializes so it's only called once we'd simply pass in the data source that the tomcat that we configure tomcat to create for us through that uh, context element which we've already looked at and um, this is uh, the, the subclasses are going to call get connection to get the database connection object here and uh, the close operation on a connection and a statement is the same command for um, all possible subclasses and here's an alternative where we're closing also the result set so not not a lot of code there but you know it's somewhat useful to put it in the parent certainly this is nice to have in the parent Okay, save that. Now the uh, the subclass, the uh, page, um, the page data access object. This will extend the the parent that we just created, the data access object. Let's go ahead and do that. Create a new class. Let's see, we don't actually have to build this. It's all pre-created for us. Let's take a look at that. Once again, we're in the wiki.data package. The class is called page DAO. It extends the data access object, which we just looked at. There's a, um, it's singleton, so we store uh, an instance. And um, we have a method to get that instance. This, the instance of this singleton class is declared static. It's private, so uh, code doesn't access it directly from outside the class. The get instance method is also static and it simply returns the that one and only instance of the class. So we've looked at this in previous chapters. This is the read method which is called by um, the various uh, find uh, functions. Find will look up We'll generate a page object for a given page name, which is right there. Update. So if if we've changed the the attributes of a particular page, we pass that page into the update method on the page DAO class. Uh, so we have a create page uh, method as well for creating new pages that are not yet in the database deleting pages from the database and so on. Well, that's it. Let's, uh, let's see where we're at. Then we, the init class is where we uh, insert, where we get the access to the to the um, to the what? To the data source. So we need to create that. So let's call that uh, the the class is simply init. It's in it is in the wiki dot web package, and it's called init. Let's go ahead and get that. 
wiki.web, this time I'm going to right click on SRC and create a new uh, class. The package is wiki.web, that's a new one. The name of the class, init, could be any name. And we have the um, the code pre-created for us. And you see here, this init implements the servlet context listener. So the context initialized function is invoked when the application is uh, is initialized by Tomcat. We call context initialized two, just because we need to wrap everything in this try catch block. It's convenient just to to see it. Uh, in a simple form like this, we could have just left this inside this uh, this try block, and uh, so we basically use this um, called the um, JNDI classes. We created an initial context. We use called ink. We use this initial context to look up this resource, cast it to a context. And then we use this uh, context to look up a resource within that resource. Actually, this is must be some type of a resource category. This is the specific resource which we cast to a data source. That's its data type. All right. Let's uh, close that. And that's it for, um, for this section on um, on uh, the persistence classes.